Hello everyone, today we're looking at the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. This is the Plus Edition, but we're going to be looking at something a little more interesting, a little more unique compared to other reviews and previews and whatnot you have of this. We're going to be playing a Pokemon clone game the way it's intended, handheld. We're going to be uh, looking at and me kind of showing you how to play Temtem, uh, which is on Steam. Uh, I don't believe it's on any uh, on Switch or might be on PlayStation, uh, but it's not on any handheld system at the moment. I'm going to show you how to play it on a handheld system uh, through Steam, through the Steam Link app on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. So let's jump right into it. So first thing we got to do, obviously this is assuming you've already set up the device. You've already you know, downloaded the apps you wanted to. Steam Link is uh, one of the apps that you can preload on the system. So when you're setting it up, uh, you can choose. So if you see it right there, that is our Steam link. And when you're setting this up for the first time, you click on the app. Ours will jump right into it, I believe. Um, but it'll, it'll show you already the desktop here. If you haven't set one up yet, uh, there'll be an option just to search nearby. And then make sure in Steam, under the settings. So you just go to the top uh, left corner, Steam settings, under remote play. And then you would just pair it there like you pair anything, like you pair phones, like you pair, uh, you know, laptops, whatever. It sends you that little four-digit code, you pair it, it's good to go. Now, the main issue with uh, playing this is that, first of all, connection, you have to have a pretty good connection, bare minimum, five to ten uh, megabytes per second as a download speed is going to be about what you're looking at. Launching it, you'll see both on the Retroid Pocket and the PC, it'll launch in big picture mode. Um, this is uh, not always what we want with this device, simply because, as you see here, we got some pretty significant black bars on the top and on the bottom. Uh, with some games, this is okay, but when you are streaming you know, a higher resolution game, the text is going to be pretty small as it is. So losing that, you know, almost what, like three quarters of an inch total, including the top and the bottom, like that's a pretty big difference when the screen is only like three and a half inches uh, in total. So let's launch Temtem and see what it looks like uh, at first here. So we can move it just like the directional buttons. It, it already recognizes the buttons on here as a controller. So let's go over to Temtem and give it a click and then play. So you see, we still had the black bars when we left there. Loading up, got our logos and everything. All right, so we're in the game here. It is full screen, completely full screen on my PC right now. We see it's not taking up the full screen here. So the way we have to do this is, is a roundabout way. It's not an easy way uh, to do it, but it's not a complicated thing either. So what we're going to do is on our PC, on our system here, We'll show you here. So we have our PC, you see, again, full screen here, no issues whatsoever. What we're actually going to do is go to the settings here. Settings, gonna go over to video settings, switch it to windowed, and then the aspect ratio four by three, and lower this down uh, to 640 by 480. Then apply those changes, okay. So we got the changes applied now, and we'll see it's really tiny on our computer in Steam mode. You know, it takes up barely, you know, the center portion of the screen there. Put this baby back. And then we'll see because we switched that, lo and behold, now it is full screen. So you've gotten that uh, screen real estate back. Now, for most Steam Link games, you're going to have to do this. Uh, this is one of the first ones I've tried. So we can leave, since it's streaming from the PC, all the graphical settings, the UI settings, we can leave the same. I found this to be the best option here. So let's load into the game now. See now, loading, we got full screen. Loading up there. Uh, the only issue I found is that some of the text, small text you're meant to be reading, I know a big, you know, 24, 27, 32 inch or larger screen is not going to be visible. So for example, when the game loads up here, we'll see, first of all, let's see, uh, how responsive it is. Now I am right next to my computer, but you can see my, my thumb movement, and then when the character moves, like it's 
pretty responsive. There's a noticeable, you know, small amount of delay, but for a game like this, perfect. So we're playing the uh, Temtem, which is a Pokemon clone, a pretty good one, and a more uh, MMO-esque type of game. So I've actually played the first maybe hour, hour and a half with a friend doing everything co-op, which is really cool. We see we're playing this mobily now. Um, the only thing, the only issue is making it this small so it fits the screen, the aspect ratio of the screen. You can't really read. Like, it's illegible what the quests are. Like, completely illegible. You cannot read it. But when you get into uh, battles or when you open your menu here, you'll see the little menu here, it's actually clear enough to read just fine. So it's just when it gets to that kind of smaller uh, level of text size that the screen's not high res enough to display that in a way you could read it. Plus it's so small to begin with that you would struggle to read it in the first place. So here we are, Temtem, running on Steam Link through our PC over the Wi-Fi, connected to the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, and it's run pretty well. Uh, I had no noticeable issues running it over Wi-Fi. It stays between um, 50 and 60 FPS on here. Now, obviously, on the PC, it's running uh, upwards of 100, 140 FPS, depending on what you're doing. It's not a super well-optimized game. There are portions where it does run kind of poorly. It'll drop down from, like, 160, 65 FPS, which I capped it at, to 100 FPS. Um, so it's still in early access, but uh, really no noticeable dips. Anything below 50 FPS here. Very responsive, and uh, this is the way. This is the way, in my opinion, it's meant to be played. Played on mobile, like a classic Pokemon game. And yeah, that's that's really all you have to do. Just go into the settings there. You can try to go into the settings on the system through the Steam Link and mess with them, um, but it's I found it much easier just to do it on PC to make it windowed and then set it that way yourself to get that full screen real estate. And here we go. Looks pretty good to me. Again, some of the text is a little hard to read, but you can easily, you know, decipher what the moves are, you know, what the uh, names of the enemies are. So everything that you need to be able to read uh, is legible. So you can go through the entire game. Maybe you'll have difficulty with a few of the, the quests you pick up along the way during your play sessions uh, on mobile, but it's a great way to play this anywhere in your house or anywhere that your Wi-Fi connects to or uh, even... If you go somewhere outside of the house, I'm not sure how well it might work when you, uh, you know, are doing it over Wi-Fi and not within the same household. So you're not communicating directly with the PC, which is like 5, 10, 20 feet away. Might not run quite as well, but I'm really impressed with this. I'm impressed with how well Steam Link runs to begin with. And uh, I was actually surprised. I don't know if I should have been surprised, but I was surprised that um, it actually read all the inputs properly. So it read this as a D-pad, everything in the right direction. It read these as, you know, bumpers and triggers. It read all of the face buttons correctly. You can set it uh, how you want to uh, register which uh, button it is. So to read it as an Xbox controller or PlayStation or Switch even. So whichever buttons you're used to, if you're used to, you know, this being your main uh, continue, you know, toggle button, or if you're used to, you know, this like being the A on Xbox, or this being the A on Nintendo, or you know X being on PlayStation here, you can switch that around, and it'll display the prompts in the game itself as well. So yeah, honestly, that's all it is. Really, just switching that in the Steam settings to, well, in the game itself to windowed, set it to uh, 640 by 480, I believe, aspect ratio 4 by 3, and you do that with any game, any game that supports that aspect ratio, and that supports uh, that resolution. Of course, any other resolution that is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio will look just fine on this too. You don't have to necessarily lower it all the way to this device's native resolution. But either way, it'll look good. So yeah, that's how you play Temtem. Full screen, Pokemon game. Pokemon style game. You'll never see it on Nintendo Switch, unfortunately. Although, maybe one day. Uh, that's how you play it on the Retroid Pocket 2. On the go. The way it's intended to be played. It's not intended to be played that way. You can't actually read it, um, but it's really fun to play it that way. So hope this uh, helped any of you that are uh, interested in playing this game on this system or a similar system, or if you just wanted to uh, figure out how to run games at the proper aspect ratio when you're streaming it to a mobile device, whether that is 
a uh, Retroid Pocket 2, whether that is a, you know, Odin Lite, you know, whatever system you might use, even like an iPad or a phone, to be able to mess with the um, resolution, maybe rest with the um, aspect ratios to get it to be uh, what fits your device uh, the best. So thank you all for watching. Hope that was interesting. Hope that helped you out. I'm going to be playing some Temtem. We'll see you all next time.